Good afternoon. Thank you for coming uh, for another update on the reservoir and uh, Pearl River. We'll have John Signal from our Pearl River Valley to give us an update. Good afternoon. I'm John Sigman with Pearl River Valley Water Supply District, also known as the Reservoir. We have some good news today. Overnight, we were able to stabilize the rise of the reservoir by increasing our outflows and matching the inflows. That occurred at about 3 a.m. And that was done before we reached the maximum projected outflow of 80,000. We stopped at 78,000. That allows for less water going downriver at this time, and that's a good thing. That also, we were able later on after our conference call with the weather service to reduce our outflows to 75,000. That gives a little bit of breathing room. It also allowed the weather service to reduce their peak forecast for the Highway 80 gauge from 38 feet to 37 and a half feet to occur sometime Sunday morning. Uh, we have got to now recover storage space in the reservoir. I want everyone to understand that. We used up three feet of storage, allowing, given the two days, for people to prepare for flood waters, to sandbag, to move, whatever they had to do. And now we've got to recover the space that we used in storage because we've got another front coming on Tuesday, somewhere between one and two inches, as the Weather Service predicts. So we'll hold the discharge up at least until in the morning after our uh, morning conference with the Weather Service, Corps of Engineers, USGS, et cetera, and then we'll make further decisions and further announcements about what we're going to do. We want to get the river down as fast as we can. We've also got to get the lake what provides protection for future floods. Uh, that's all I have at this time. I think we'll take questions at the end. Yes, sir. Now we'll hear from Jackson Weather. Good afternoon, Felicia Bowser with the National Weather Service in Jackson, Mississippi. Here's just going to give you a quick update about our forecast that we're expected this coming week. The upper level system that provided us with rainfall earlier this morning is shifting east and thus perhaps we could just see some lingering rainfall, maybe some sprinkles or something for the rest of the day. But the heaviest rainfall has ended for today. Monday during the day should be more or less rain free, but it is Monday night where another r wave of rainfall will settle in across the region. As such, one to two inches with the potential for locally higher amounts is expected Monday night into Wednesday morning, mainly across areas of Vicksburg, Jackson Metro, McGee, Philadelphia, to a south of Eupura, Eupura area, and around one inch or so elsewhere, maybe a little bit less than that elsewhere, especially as we head towards the Pine Belt. Although this is, an, this is not an excessive amount of rainfall, this is a special circumstance due to the fact that we have been having ongoing flooding conditions, obviously, from the earlier rainfall, thus causing the pearl to rise. So an inch or two of rainfall will, of course, exacerbate any ongoing flooding conditions. Another wave of rainfall is expected on Thursday, with drier conditions occurring late in the week, Friday and into Saturday. However, we could see another round of rain return earlier the following week on Monday. It's a little bit too soon to give you exacts on that. Now, when it comes to severe weather potential, the chance for severe weather looks relatively low, which is good news, but we could see if maybe a few, hear a few rumbles of thunder and maybe some gusty winds associated with some of this activity coming this week. But the, the potential for tornadoes and damaging wind gusts and whatnot, that doesn't look as, as high, which is good news. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to express uh, our appreciation to the local, county, and state emergency response teams that have helped us through this circumstance. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, I will uh, just reiterate a few things and wait for the questions that may come. Uh, I would like to emphasize to the citizens once again that we are still in a critical situation. An evacuation order is still in effect. Uh, residents with medical or mobility issues needing assistance for getting out of their homes can call the non-emergency number for JPD at 601-960-1234. I uh, want to make it clear uh, for those individuals uh, that have needed to seek shelter at our police training facility, which is at 3000 St. Charles Street, we are asking that you come prepared for a few days, uh, having a change of clothing 
change, change of clothing, uh, towels, toiletries, medication, or anything else that you absolutely need. Uh, as we consider infants, uh, there are a number of things that babies need, uh, whether it be formula or uh, diapers, so be prepared for that as well. Uh, I'd like to also uh, state that we know that there are approximately 504 homes in the city that are without power. Uh, look for Intergy for more updates on that uh, so that you can be informed. Uh, once again, please stay out of floodwaters. Be smart. Turn around. Don't drown. Uh, and understand that barricades are there for your protection. Thank you. Now I'll uh, hear from Hines County Board of Supervisors President uh, Robert Graham. Good afternoon. I would also like to thank the City of Jackson, my fellow Supervisor, Supervisor Archie, Supervisor Calhoun, for assisting during this particular disaster. We'd also want to make sure that citizens know that this is not over. The disaster is not over. Uh, we still have people in the North Jackson area that are driving through, sightseeing. That's one of the biggest problems that we're having in North Jackson at this particular time. Uh, we want people to continue to check on their neighbors, but not to sightsee. Uh, we're expecting more rain, uh, as just mentioned a few minutes ago, and we have to prepare for that. The Hines County Board of Supervisors, along with its Public Works Department, will deploy over half of their Public Works Department tomorrow to work with the City of Jackson um, on up through the next couple of weeks with debris cleanup as well tomorrow between the hours of 12 and 2 or until the water runs out. The Board of Supervisors will um, give out water, distribute water to anyone in the affected area. We'd like to ask the citizens to please, if you do not live in the affected area, don't come to get the water. The water is specifically for the individuals in the affected area. Again, I'd like to thank everyone involved for working together to make sure that we do everything that we can for the citizens of the city of Jackson and Hines County. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I and the Board of Supervisors appreciate so much that what everybody is doing. Now, uh, I don't, don't want to digress just a little bit. Uh, I think that we should have done something about um, the flooding problem in the city of Jackson since it's been 40 years. I was in the first uh, 1979 flood, and we as a board will be fighting to make sure that our citizens do not have to go back through this. We're going to be talking about this. We're going to have uh, our elected officials on the national level working with us to make sure that we get the one lake project. We know that we had Saco, two lakes, and that fell through. But we must do something for our citizens, and we, as a board, we'll be working to do that. Sure. Now, if we'd like, we'd like to hear from MEMA on their uh, response. Mayor, Board of Supervisors, thanks for uh, inviting us out. Just want to get a quick update on what uh, the Mississippi Emergency Management Agency is doing. Uh, from the group of individuals you see up here, uh, we have several task force uh, that we've mobilized, and we have several that are in reserves as well. We've had our partners from the surrounding counties uh, with high water vehicles, boats, and other equipment that was needed that we've been able to uh, bring into the site and actually do, do work. Uh, there's, uh, there's some unsung heroes that I do want to thank. Uh, I talked to a few of them this morning, and that's the, the city and the county public work uh, individuals. They, these guys and gals are out there putting out barricades. Uh, please don't move them. The barricades mean do not go any further, and they continuously are moving those in and out and back and forth to support all the activities of the first responders for us to get out there and do the things that we need to do. Uh, so we're, we, MEMA still uh, stands ready to support uh, the county and the city and all their activities and we're not just here today we're not just here during response I also represent the side of the agency that does long-term recovery and that's some discussions that the county and myself and the mayor's office is going to start having today and uh, we're going to get a plan together so uh, uh, we here at Maine want to say thank you to to the media as well you don't understand how important your messages are as they go out to the citizens you're, you're, you're paramount we can't reach them all by ourselves, and we appreciate what you do as well. That's all I have.
Thank you. My name is Brian Grantham with Rankin County Emergency Operations. Just want to let everyone know that we are cautiously optimistic with the news that we learned today from uh, the Barnett Reservoir. Uh, at this time, we have not been made aware of any residences in Rankin County that have taken on water. We do know there, know there are a few businesses in the Flowood area, so we'll be working with them when it comes to uh, damage assessment. Lake Forest Drive and the Palisades subdivision has some backwater in it from the reservoir being so high. Uh, however, it is not near any houses, it is just on the streets, and alternative routes have been put in place for that. Another thing I wanted to report is we have a self-reporting tool uh, provided by MEMA through Crisis Track so that you can go on our Facebook and Twitter pages and find that link. You can also go on our county website, click on that link, fill out the information, it notifies us immediately that you've had damage to your house or your business, and we can follow up with that with the uh, damage assessments. Uh, last thing I want to say is we're thankful to all the citizens of Rankin County who have worked with us, helped us spread the word, get the information out there, as well as the news media. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Last thing I'd like to say is Hines County Emergency Management Agency will still be staffed and working 24 hours until this emergency is over. Uh, so if y'all have any questions for the, the field that's up here. Yes, sir. Let me make one thing clear. I don't want to give anyone a false impression. The reservoir has reduced outflows. That's true. We look for the river levels to drop. They're not dropping yet. They're going to continue to rise until it reaches a peak sometime Sunday. So if water is approaching your home or business, don't relax. It still can rise somewhat. The, the uh, peak has been felt at Hanging Moss Creek, and it just will move its way south. So, so be vigilant. Be aware. Thank you, John. One thing I'd like to say is we're going from 38 to 37 and a half. That's not a whole lot, but it's better than the 38, so we still have a major record flood in Northeast Jackson uh, and downtown Jackson. Uh, questions from anyone? I didn't know if Marty Pope from the Weather Service could answer this question about why it will take so long for this water to get out of here. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of water that's actually stored up uh, above uh, hanging moss up above in the Lakeland Drive area. It's stored off to the side there, so it's going to take a long time for this rainfall to, I mean, from the rainfall that's actually come, I mean, the storage that's come down from uh, the reservoir there to actually drain out uh, from up above uh, uh, the Lakeland Drive area to go down through Jackson. It's going to take any, anywhere from uh, next 6 to 12 hours for that water to actually really drain out and get into, uh, to make it down to the Highway 80 gauge. It's going to take us uh, uh, some time after that for the river will probably remain very high after that just because it's gonna, that water will continue to slowly drain out of areas over towards, say, the Rankin County side of the, of the river. John, can you predict uh, how long it would take for the reservoir to reduce its levels to a comfortable level? How long will it take for us to reduce the levels to a comfortable level? Yes, sir. Several days at the, at the quickest. That's if I can keep my flows up. I've got to get three feet of water out of the lake. I don't need necessarily to do all that by Tuesday, and I won't be able to do it by Tuesday. But we're going to get it down as far as we can, and that gives us the capability to handle the next storm that's coming. When the river crests tomorrow, then the river itself will be falling along its length slowly. So you'll see the floodwaters recede from the storage areas Mari talked about and also from the subdivisions and the streets. It's going to be a long process. Mm -hmm. And with that extra rain coming, how much of an effect will that have? It will, it will prolong the fall. The rain that's coming, if it's no more than the two inches, will prolong the fall. I don't see us increasing discharges from the reservoir at the, at, because of that event, but we don't know. When the rain gets in the gauge, then we can do something with it. To predict what we do before that is oftentimes very hazardous. Weather doesn't do what you want it to or what you think it will do. So be aware. Mayor, tomorrow, the morning commute, 
lots of streets are going to be closed. I know some parts of State Street possibly going to have some flooding. Can you talk about some of the what you're seeing inside the city, especially downtown, when it comes to flooding? People are probably know that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's based on those areas that are affected. Uh, our first responders are placing those barricades in areas that are unsafe to travel. And so that's why it's important that, that residents are mindful of those barricades because they are there for their protection. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that you called me back up because there was one other thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, you know, we're looking at this as when the water recedes. That is not when, when this circumstance uh, stops becoming a concern to the residents. There are people who are going to be returning to their homes. There's going to be a period where there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, damage that has to be assessed and, and debris removed. And so I just want to encourage citizens to be patient with one another and to be supportive of one another. Anytime you're dealing uh, in crisis, in moments of crisis, the first casualty is trust. Uh, and so we have to be trusting and supportive of one another. Ricky, uh, Ryan said no homes flooded in Rankin County so far. What about Rankin? Yes, we do have homes that have been flooded in Hines County. We don't know how many yet. I do know they have, I believe the mayor said they've turned power off to 504. Rolling Wood. Uh, there's a home in Rolling Wood that we know has got about two and a half feet of water in it. Uh, sorry. Old Canton Club. Over on uh, River Road, uh, some of those houses have got two and a half, three feet of water in them. Uh, so we, we have a bunch of homes flooded. Uh, we just don't have a total number yet until the river stops rising. And this lowering of the crest by half a foot, how many homes do you think that might so? Well, in, in our list, uh, we have some homes that 38 foot was only going to get a couple of inches. So those homes will be saved. The ones that's going to get two and three and up to four foot of water, it's not going to do much for them. But we won't have a number on that until we get through with the, the event. That specific area of Jackson that we were talking about, we have reports that people were kicking kicking in doors and doing some looting in some of those neighborhoods. <coughs> you want to answer that, Chief? To that, and if, and if that is not the case, what do you want to say to residents about keeping their property safe or what you're doing to patrol those areas? Okay. James Davis, Chief of Police. Uh, we hadn't heard any reports of that. We, were out, we have uh, uh, went to our 12 hours emergency, uh, uh, our 12 hours emergency uh, res response team. So we have heard, hadn't heard any of that. But first of all, I want to thank the uh, community uh, for taking heed to this uh, evacuation. Because of that, I think we just had about a handful of uh, rescue, water rescue. And also, we also have uh, patrol men out there where they continue to patrol the area when the families leave. So as far as that, we haven't heard any looting. looting. Uh, if first person would have heard of that, it was the, it's the police. So we hadn't heard that. So it's not true. I'd also like to take the opportunity not only to thank the response of JPD, but of the Sheriff's Department. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has uh, been helping, has been assisting the city in terms are flooding. Uh, I saw firsthand, I, I got up about 4.30 in the morning, decided to ride some of the affected areas on all of the streets that you could enter. Uh, you had sheriff's deputies that were, were uh, posted uh, and, and checking the, the traffic in and out and people trying to go. I want people to be encouraged that you have a, a team that is here uh, not only to uh, help you protect your life but to also protect your property. Uh, and I don't want anybody trying to go back into their home too soon uh, before this threat is uh, beyond us. Mr. Mayor, can you address the, the water issue for people drinking water and the lingering effects that this event has had on that aspect of the city? I don't, I don't know, you know, what lingering effects it, water, it We have a boil water. Yeah, the boil water notice is, is from an event uh, back in uh, January. Um, and that event, the health department later notified us that we had to have, we had to put the notice out. So once they informed us, we put that out, um, and it was, um, it was requested that we write a notice to them, and once that notice has been re reviewed, then we anticipate that that will be lifted. Uh, one of the things that complicates that timeline is that Monday is a holiday, and so the samples that happen, that take place anytime there's a boil water notice, uh, the health department has to, to uh, review those. So anytime there's a boil water notice, there are samples that are always provided. We feel really, we feel confident that those samples are, 
are sufficient, but we need to wait for the time where people come back to work to review them. Mayor, do you think, do you feel like everybody's out that needs to be out of these neighborhoods? It's my prayer that everyone is out that needs to be out. Uh, I know that there were a few individuals uh, that were hanging on and trying to ride things out. Uh, and I don't necessarily judge those individuals. We have to understand that this is, uh, this is a, um, a troubling circumstance. And so people are considering all the things that they have gathered over the years in their homes. Uh, they're considering whether they can afford to leave. Uh, all that being considered, uh, it is still in the best interest of those individuals to evacuate. And so uh, I think that our police department has done a stellar job, along with the sheriff's department, in, in uh, knocking on doors, uh, assessing who's at home and who's not, and encouraging them to, to leave. And I think that that was happening uh, to the very end yesterday. And I do know of some, some personal stories where, where people uh, at the last moment were, were ushered out. Are a lot of people taking advantage of the police training academy to use as a shelter? Uh, the last count that I received uh, early this morning where there were about uh, 15 people there. 30 now. There are 30 now, so that's yeah. doubled since I, I was last uh, informed. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're there to serve. We appreciate the American Red Cross uh, assisting the city of Jackson, uh, providing staff um, to support the needs of those individuals. Uh, you know, we, we are we're here to serve. Uh, even individuals who, you know, we're happy to hear that, that certain areas have not been affected, but even some of the surrounding cities, uh, we're here to serve. Brady, can you address what's going on in the big black while we're here? Do you mind addressing that? What the situation the, is over there? Yeah, we've had several rescues on the big black. The big black is a little over 40 feet. Uh, we've done two extractions at the big black in the last two days. We're in the process of sending a swift water rescue team to that area now to extract a family. Uh, this will be the third time we've been to that family. They lost their water well this morning, so they don't have any uh, drinking water. So they've asked to be extracted. So we're in route now with a, a swift water rescue team from the state to try to extract them from the backwater. What's, what's the overall picture of what's going on over there? Well, it's, what is it, Marty, 40.1? The record's like 42 uh, all-time record, so uh, we have surpassed what it was last year at 39 feet. You got a lot of uh, cabins over there that's built up above the water level, but they're not used to having this kind of swift water for this length, length of time. So it's starting to get very dangerous over there. It's dangerous to put these swift water people to go rescue them. Uh, I think it's like 10 families. We went door to door yesterday, or the Swift Water Rescue teams went door to door yesterday asking if they wanted to leave. Some of them said no, but now we got one that's changed their mind, so we're going after them uh, as we speak. One thing I'd like to address the last two days, we've had Metro One and Hines County Sheriff's Department to fly this river from the dam all the way to Terry and back up. They just got back from a flight. The first thing they saw was kids on inner tubes playing in this backwater off of Sheffield Drive. If these parents don't hear anything out of this news conference today, keep these kids out of this water. It's a lot of contamination, a lot of sewer. It's not safe. It's a lot of swift water, a lot of unknowns. We don't need a tragedy out of this. Rodents. Rodents, all we need, and if the mayor has said this in every press conference, I've seen him on TV all week, and we've said it here. These parents need to keep these kids out of this water. It's very dangerous. Woodrow Wilson Bridge, are you asking folks to stay off of that too? We saw that yesterday. Uh, they're taking these kids out there, walking to that bridge to see the water coming over uh, the, the old Woodrow Wilson Bridge. It doesn't take anything for one of these kids to stick their head through that bridge, and down they go. We need. This is not a time for sightseeing or picture taking. We ask everyone stay out of these flooded areas, even off of these bridges, even at Byram on the Swinging Bridge. We got people down there sightseeing, walking out to get on this bridge. This swift water is not going to do anything but, but uh, get one of our loved ones. Good afternoon. Uh, David L. Archie, Hines County Supervisor, District 2. Um, there's just a couple of things that I would like to mention and back up the uh, chief of police, the mayor, the sheriff, and all of the board of supervisors that was present and all and everybody that is here. 
you must understand that this is a humanity crisis. And what we're doing is asking those that are doing business here in Hines County, as well as the city of Jackson, to do not price gouge um, folks that are having to go to hotels. Um, we're asking you to be business friendly as well as neighbor friendly. For those of you that want to take an opportunity to take advantage of citizens that is already at a disadvantage, we ask you do not participate in anything that perhaps that will cause you to uh, go to jail. Uh, this is a serious matter. Done very well so far. And some of uh, individuals out there, we're asking you not to spoil it uh, for Hines County as well as the city of Jackson and the state of Mississippi. It's a humanity crisis. We understand advantage of other people, but we're just asking you from the chief of police, Hines County Sheriff's Department, police officers, uh, the mayor, everybody that is involved, MEMA, we're just asking you, please, sir, please, ma'am. Uh, be good neighbors and good business people and do not take advantage of anybody at this particular time, and we thank you for that. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.